Joshua Lutz here with JML Recording. You know what I wanted to do? I wanted to help out the guys coming up, the younger kids that are just starting to use Pro Tools. They're wondering, should I just stick with Cubase or Logic or maybe I can just get away with, you know, Cakewalk or even GarageBand? Don't do it. If you're gonna learn to use an audio program, a digital audio workstation, learn Pro Tools. Why? Because it's the industry standard. And if you ever take your music to a real studio for mixing or mastering, they're gonna wanna see it in Pro Tools. They're, go they're gonna wanna see a PTS file, Pro Tools session file. Just like a Word document is a .doc, Pro Tools files are .pts, that is a session file. If you go to a conservatory for recording arts and sciences of any kind, they're gonna be on Pro Tools. Chances are once you start collaborating with people in their home studios, they're gonna be on Pro Tools. It's just a good rule of thumb to use the tools that the professionals are using. And yes, it's a little bit buggy, and it's also expensive, but let me ask you this one question before we jump right in. Are you serious about your career in audio? If the answer is yes, well then, for better or for worse, you better get yourself a copy of Pro Tools. All right, here we are in front of my beautiful new iMac with 64 gigs of RAM. The more RAM you have, the more powerful your computer. So what I wanna do is just talk about the tools we're gonna be using. I'm also talking today on a shotgun mic. Kinda of weird, right? I recently did um, an Orange County Choppers television show and they did all the voiceover work on shotgun mics instead of their typical U87 or an SM7B or an RE20. So I'm trying it out for this video and we'll see how it sounds. What's the first thing we do? Once we have Pro Tools on our computer, let's just open it up. So let's switch over to the screen here. And the first thing you're gonna see is this little dashboard screen. You can either create, open a recent session, uh, projects you're never really gonna use uh, unless you're doing remote stuff. So you're probably gonna create a new session. We'll call this one test. I have another video where I talk about bit depth and sample rate. Um, my preferred bit depth and sample rate is 1648. If you are using this for the first time, I highly recommend that. Always leave interleaved checked on. You can either prompt for a location or choose it now and click location. I always record on an external drive and then you just click the create button. Next thing you know, you have this window. This is your edit window. I want you to take a pen and paper or open up a doc that you can take notes because if you hit command and the plus sign, you're now looking at your mix window. So press it again and you're going back and forth between mix and edit window. That's huge. That is the first thing you need to do. Shift, command, N is how you create new tracks. Look at this window. What does it say? New tracks. So uh, this is something they taught me in conservatory. I'm going to teach you right now. If you hold the command button down, it's what kind of track? Now, we probably want an audio track, right? So what kind of audio track? A mono or stereo? Right now it's defaults at mono. If you want a stereo track, tab over to the right with the right arrow key and you get the word stereo. Back and forth, stereo, mono, mono, stereo. So let's create four stereo tracks. There you go. Now let's do it again. Shift, command, N. You can uh, practice with me. If I press up and down, I get what type of track this is gonna be. We're gonna want a master fader in stereo. So we tab down to master and over to stereo. Bang, there's your master fader. Some people theorize that this degrades the quality of your audio. It is absolute nonsense. The master fader does not degrade your audio. This is where you can also create an aux input, which we're gonna talk about later. Um, MIDI tracks we can talk about later, instrument tracks we can talk about later, but for now let's maybe make a couple uh, like four mono audio tracks. So now what are we looking at? We have four stereo and four mono and let's drag our master to the bottom. Now command plus sign switches over to my edit window and here are my faders. Let's talk about this from top to bottom. Inserts, essentially if you want to put an equalizer or a compressor or some kind of time-based or dynamic effect on that track, this is where you're gonna do it, you see? Sends, this is where you wanna maybe use some outboard gear and you wanna send a track out to like an outboard compressor, like this is where you would do it. Your IO, what does IO stand for? By the way, I'm only telling you the most important stuff you need to know. I'm skipping over 
a whole bunch of stuff because I just want you to hit the ground and start recording music. That's all I care about. Within 20 to 30 minutes, you should have everything you need to know from this video on I don't know anything about Pro Tools to I am able to record and mix my own music in Pro Tools, okay? So I.O., super duper important. That means inputs and outputs. So here on the top are my inputs and the little gray bar below are my outputs, okay? In and out. Right now, I have 16 inputs. You see this? This is a stereo track, so it's assuming I want either one or two, three or four, five or six. And if I go to one of my mono tracks, my inputs look like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have 16 because I have an Apollo X16. That is my interface. If you're using an Apollo twin, it'll just say one and two. Let's select an input, one and two. Your output should always be default as your monitor outputs. Setup, I.O. This is where we can look at our I.O. So right now, my inputs are all one through 16. So here's my outputs. I have monitor outputs as one and two. That's why I can't use it. Look, one and two, monitors left and right. There you go, inputs, outputs. Now, I wanna make a point. If your buses are wrong, and you have some weird wacky stuff and you've messed with this, your outputs especially will all get all jacked up. So sometimes you just wanna select everything and delete it and then hit default. And that'll just pull all the information and then your outputs will be correct. When you hit okay, sometimes you, all your outputs will get grayed out. That's because you just changed your outputs. The first thing you wanna do is make sure that all your outputs are correct. If you wanna apply the same thing track by track, one, two, three, four, like this, you're gonna to wanna to hold the Alt key down. Whatever you click and do, holding the Alt key down, uh, is applied to all the tracks. So I'm gonna click my monitor out, and I'm gonna go output. Watch, let me just do a screwy output. Let's do seven and eight. Look what just happened. All of my outputs changed to seven and eight. I'm gonna click it again, holding the Alt key, and select the proper monitor output, and they all switch over to monitor output. Okay, so now let's record enable a track. And let's play some keyboards through it and see if it works. Now, you hear that? I got some piano on this Roland over here. The problem is I don't see it on the track. I see it on my Apollo X16. It's showing I have level, but it's not coming into my track. Why? Because I didn't set the right input. So I need to go up to input and I need to look where is uh, where are the keyboards coming in? Oh, on three and four. I have it set to one and two, defaulted. If you have an Apollo Twin, you probably don't have to worry about this as much, but if you have any other DAW, uh, if you have any other interface, rather, that has multiple inputs and outputs, make sure you select the right inputs, and this is where you do it. There it is, line three and four. This is a line instrument, it is a keyboard. It's not a mic instrument at mic level, and uh, it is a line, that's why these all say line, they are line inputs, okay? So if you don't understand the difference between mic level, instrument level, and line level, you probably wanna watch one of my previous videos so you can understand when to use a DI box or a reamp box. Right now, we're just going to keyboards right into the preamp. Oh, did you catch that? Keyboards should go into a preamp. Bring that instrument level up to line level. So we're bringing our keyboards up to line level with a, Neve 10, a pair of Neve 1073s. That's our preamp that will bring it up to line level. So now let's play and see. Oh. Look at that. When recording in Pro Tools, it is extremely important to know that you are not trying to get as close to the red in the orange as possible. You don't even want to get into the orange. You Look at your meters here, okay? This is a zero dB at the top. That's where you're clipping. When you clip in the digital world, you get what's called a false frequency or an alias. And digital distortion sounds like this. It sounds terrible. You'd never want to clip in Pro Tools. This little red dot there means I clipped my headroom. That means I went above the threshold of what is allowed in Pro Tools. I got digital distortion. Where do we want to be recording when we record? What is a healthy level? This is long debated. Look, I clipped again. Let's turn it down. You want to be recording everything right there. See how it's hitting the top of 25? That's good. Why are we recording so low? We, here's one of the dangers of recording low. If you have a noisy preamp and then you have to bring it up later in the mix, you're gonna lift the noise floor with it. So any ambient noise, like just hum or hiss from the preamp will be lifted too. Not with a keyboard, and if you recorded a vocal well, not with a vocal or any other instrument. 
you're gonna have 15, 20 tracks going or more. And when everything is played together, your master will quickly start to clip. When everything's put together, that volume, the total volume just gets goes through the roof. So we want to be recording everything at a nominal level. Uh, how do I record? Okay, I what did I just do? Command plus sign. I can switch back and forth between my mix and my edit window, don't forget. Let's talk about properly labeling our tracks. So here, I, it just says audio one, but we know that to be keyboards. How did I open that window? I double clicked on the word audio one. All right, it says audio one, and let's call it keys. And in the comments, I might write Juno 106. If you're really big into recall, you can go to Barry Rudolph. If you want to recall your gear, you go to BarryRudolph.com and pretty much every piece of gear ever made is here. Look, API 550. I click on it and I get this. You can print it out. You can note it and put it in a folder for your session. Barry Rudolph is one of the best. He's been doing it the longest. That website's like 30 years old. Or you can notate it here in your comments. You click OK and there's my keys track. Now it says keys. Make sure my input is correct, three and four. My output is set to my monitor outs and I'm gonna hit record. Here's a little trick. Up here is where we can adjust the height view of our waveforms. However, there's no default. So once you screw with this, you'll never know how the heck to get it back. Control, Option, Command, click it. Puts it back at the default. So now let's record a whole bunch of stuff on here and let's start mixing. All right, so here we are. I've recorded some stuff and it looks great. There's a few things I want to do first. Why is it all black and white? If I double click on this gray area right next to my track, a little color palette pops up and I can color this whatever I want. And now I want to organize. How did I just do that? Zoom in and zoom out. Okay, here we go. Command brackets, left and right. Super important. All right, oh, look at these little markers. Click where you want to put it, function, enter or return depending on if you're a Mac or PC and there you go you can label it test enter and there it is test and I can actually move it around and if I want to delete it I drag it up it turns into a garbage can I let it go that's how you put markers and you can start recording from a marker now I got a lot of tracks going on and I want to shrink them all down so they fit into one screen this little gray area right here if I control click it it says small, mini, micro, large, jumbo. Obviously, that changes the size. However, if I want to change all of them at the same time, I hold what button? I've already told you. Alt, that's right. Alt, if I click Alt, when I click anything, it applies whatever I do to every single track. So I, let's do it. I click Alt and I go small. And now, the whole session fits in my window. So now they're all fitting in one window and let's just listen to what we've got here. Okay, so we've got some music here. Cool. All right, and it sounds pretty good, uh, but we can certainly clean this up. Okay, so let's talk about some troubleshooting issues. If you are unable to get this far, there's a whole bunch of reasons why that might be. So in our setup here, you have all kinds of stuff. Let's look at our playback engine. It should reference the interface that you are using. It should not say Pro Tools aggregate, built-in microphone, HDMI. If you've got an external TV plugged in, it'll say HDMI. Uh, Universal Audio Thunderbolt, that's what we want to be on if you have an Apollo and whatever interface you have should show up in this list. If it doesn't, then that's one of your, your first problems right there. So you might need to download the driver to your interface. So let's look at some of our preferences. So you don't really want to get into a lot of this, but some of the ones you might want to do are, I like to leave timeline insertion following playback off and edit insertion following scrub shuttle on. So I'm not gonna get into all this other stuff, but I do wanna talk about our pre-roll. So you just click okay. This is your transport, right? Now command one will also bring up your transport. There it is, command one. This is basically this, you see? It's just a copy of this. But it also has some other information here. You'll notice pre-roll. This is very important. 
Now it's set to bars and beats. I like to have it to minutes and seconds. So let's just click on this little drop down arrow and go to minutes and seconds. There we go. Now I can see that I have a 6.5 second pre-roll. Let's change that to like four seconds. That means that when I start recording from here, I'll have four seconds before the red line actually kicks in and I'm recording. I'm just listening for four seconds before we're actually recording. Let me show you how that works. Ready? Command spacebar. Let's record. No tracks are enabled. Why do you think it said that? Ah, because if I come over here, I do not have the track record enabled. Ah, here's another error. Let's get to the bottom of all this. One audio track could not be record enabled because it doesn't have both inputs and outputs assigned. Let's blow up this track so we can see it a little better. I'm going to click this little gray area, go to large. It has no input. So let's go to interface and let's give it an input. Let's call it line one. Okay, now it's not dark gray anymore and it's live. And I have my output set properly. Okay, so now when I hit record enable, it should work. Or should it? Why doesn't it work? No tracks are record enabled. So let's come back over here. Click the little red button. That's how we record. We can take it out of mute as well. Um, if you just want to hear this track without anything else, you hit the little yellow S. That means solo. Okay? M means mute. When you're mixing, you'll be using these quite often. So now if I hit command spacebar, I am recording. But what happened to my pre-roll? I was supposed to have a little bit of pre-roll there. Why didn't it work? First of all, let's undo what we just did. How do we undo? Command Z. So I undid, and now I want to add that pre-roll. To toggle pre-roll on and off, get ready, write this down, Command K. Command K toggles your pre-roll on and off. Now look, I get that full four seconds, three, four, one thousand, bong. There we go, now we're recording. All right, thanks for watching the first part, but now you gotta watch the second part, because that's only half of the information you need to really master Pro Tools. In the second part, we're gonna talk about automation, how to use the four different modes of Pro Tools, how to set up an aux, how to bounce your music out into a wave or a simple MP3. So thank you for watching. Check out the second video right now. God bless.